We are live. Good evening and welcome to the Fredericksburg district virtual spring public meeting. We will begin with some short comments uh, from secretary Valentine followed by others. And then we will have the opportunity for public comment. Madam secretary. Thank you, Kim Pryor, and thank you for all you do to pull these meetings together. Hello, Fredericksburg District. We are so happy to be with you and welcome to the 2021 spring six year improvement program update. Um, I can assure you, we would all very much like to be with you in person. Um, and we understand um, this is where we are right now, but we certainly have been a part of a remarkable year. Um, one where I can assure you that throughout it, the health and safety of our employees and our customers and our partners have been our top priority. We've made a commitment across the entire secretariat from the Port of Virginia, aviation, uh, rail, trucking, transit, barges to move critical um, goods and cargo and to connect people to essential work, food, medicine, and now vaccines. And all of that commitment is all in place, as we've all had to also manage the financial implications of this pandemic. It appears that um, with the new numbers, we are going to be looking at about a $640 million reduction through FY22 in transportation revenues. But because of some very solid, important decisions made in 2020, Virginia has been able to manage those reductions and still maintain our transportation programs. In January of 2020, the governor introduced an omnibus transportation program. In it, it restructured our transportation funding. It, it tied it to the CPI index. We um, created um, the governance structure for passenger rail, and we made a financial commitment to a true multimodal system. That funding has helped secure us through this pandemic. I will also tell you that during the special session um, of 2020, we were able to obtain budget flexibility from the General Assembly. Um, when I say we, it's the Commonwealth Transportation Board. It's just over this biennium, this two year period, and it is cash management system that is allowing us to use every dollar we have and to put it to work today so that we are able to preserve every project in our six year improvement program on time and on the schedule that the project has been introduced. We are not having to delay projects or cancel contracts or lay off workers. We really believe that through the steps that have been taken over this last year, it has been the smartest decision from transportation to secure the recovery and growth of Virginia's economy. And because of many of those decisions, we are coming to you today with a six year improvement program FY22 through FY27, which totals $21.4 billion, 3,900 projects across the entire Commonwealth. And so as we present an update to you, um, I am joined today by VDOT Commissioner Stephen Britch. He will be going over our safety um, commitments um, throughout our program and during COVID, as well as our highway six year improvement program updates. We have a director of our Department of Rail and Public Transportation, Jennifer Mitchell, updating us on rail and transit investments and giving us an update on the transforming rail in Virginia. That was um, the commercial close, which was announced um, on March 30th of this year and very, very significant to this particular district. We are also joined by um, our CTB representative, Cedric Rucker. Uh, we're so pleased to have him in this district and on our board and um, our district engineer, Marcy Parker. Um, he will be going over the some local um, priorities with us tonight. So I thank you all. I thank you for being with us and um, offering your comments to you at the end of these brief updates. And so with that, Commissioner Britch, I'm going to turn it over to you. Madam Secretary, thank you very much. Uh, I do have three topics that I'll be covering tonight uh, for this hearing, one of which is our commitment to safety. As you know, 
April is Highway Safety Month here in Virginia, as, de as designated by Governor Northam. Uh, and VDOT is now partnering with several of our sister agencies to heighten the awareness for highway safety this month. And, and our partners with those sister agencies are the Virginia State Police, the Department of Motor Vehicles, the Department of Health, as well as the Department of Education. And this week is very special to VDOT. Uh, this week, VDOT is observing National Work Zone Awareness Week. Uh, this year's theme is Drive Safe work safe and save lives. The theme was chosen because it emphasizes the part that everyone plays to keep workers as well as motorists safe in our work zones. Uh, tomorrow is actually a very special day and I would invite you to join us. It is uh, Go Orange Day and we encourage people to wear orange in support of all those who work on our roads each and every day. I'd like to touch base on a little bit of the agency's response to COVID-19 and the pandemic uh, during 2020. Uh, as you know, th this past year has been a challenge for all of us and VDOT has been no different in that. The pandemic has really re has required unprecedented flexibility, adaptability, and the department's staff has stepped up and responded. Our primary focus with the onset of the pandemic was on protecting our employees. We needed to ensure the safety of our workforce was first and paramount. Uh, honestly, we had to adjust immediately to a whole new operating environment from our field crews learning social distancing to our office workers embracing teleworking. Even with the global pandemic, VDOT has continued to deliver our services whether it's the department holding virtual public hearings, such as this one, or engaging the public and other stakeholders. VDOT has continued to advertise and award our projects and hire consultants with, with no loss. We've continued to keep those projects moving on time and on budget, as the secretary had indicated. Now, let me speak to you a little bit about what's contained in the six-year improvement program. This year's program that, that we'll, we're discussing tonight is the FY 2022 through 2027 highway construction program, which is valued on the VDOT side at $15.7 billion over the next six years. The program provides funding for more than 3,900 projects and includes $4.1 billion in funding from other partners, such as Northern Virginia Transportation Authority, the Hampton Roads Transportation Accountability Commission, the Central Virginia Transportation Authority, and our P3 concessionaires. The, the program fully implements the new transportation funding formula that was approved by the governor and the General Assembly in 2020. So we take full advantage of that here in this program. There are several funding programs that have been updated uh, that were not updated last year due to the pandemic, but we will be updating them this year. And that is the state of good repair for paving, the state of good repair for bridges, our unpaved roads, the innovation and technology transportation fund projects, as well as smart scale round four. In addition, our regional partners have updated the regional surface transportation and the CMAC or the congestion mitigation and air quality program areas. I'm happy to announce that as a result of the omnibus legislation that was uh, adopted this summer uh, by the governor and the General Assembly, we're introducing two new program areas. That's the interstate operations and enhancement program and our Virginia Highway Safety Improvement Program. At the bottom of this screen, you'll see uh, a website address uh, that will contain the new the projects that are being included in the each of these funding areas. And I encourage you to visit this website. Madam Secretary, that concludes my comments for this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Brett. Director Mitchell. Thank you so much, Secretary, and I'm very pleased to be here tonight with everybody in the Fredericksburg District to tell you a little bit more about our highlights from our six-year plan uh, for DRPT. 
So in fiscal year 22, we're going to be allocating over a billion dollars in federal and state uh, funds to both rail and public transportation. That includes 756 million for public transportation, that including 20.9 million for our new transit ridership incentive program. We'll also be allocating 266 million in rail funds, which includes 88 million in transform for transforming rail in Virginia, another 83.5 million to extend inner city passenger rail to the New River Valley and add service to Roanoke. Also 83.5 million for improvement of commuter rail service on VRE's Manassas line. Uh, as Secretary Valentine alluded to, we are in the process of um, uh, getting mobilized, the, the Virginia Passenger Rail Authority and beginning the Transforming Rail in Virginia program. This is our partnership with CSX, Amtrak and VRE to double Amtrak state supported service across the state and increase VRE service um, by 75%, and that includes service in the Fredericksburg Corridor. As part of that, we'll be purchasing right-of-way from CSX, including 384 miles of right-of-way and 223 miles of track across the state. That's in several different areas. It includes half of the uh, what's called the RF&P, and that's the line between uh, DC extending through the Fredericksburg District South to Richmond and Petersburg, Virginia. We'll be acquiring half of that from CSX. We'll also be acquiring all of CSX's um, right of way between Petersburg, Virginia and Ridgeway, North Carolina on an abandoned line called the S line. We'll also be uh, purchasing nearly all of CSX's right of way uh, from Doswell East, I'm sorry, West to Clifton Forge, Virginia. And that's a line called the Buckingham Branch Line, which will allow us to preserve it for future passenger rail service. In addition to that, when we do purchase that track, we'll also be um, making a number of infrastructure improvements. That includes about 37 miles of new track and improvements between Washington to Richmond, and also building a new two-track long bridge, which is a new two-track span across the Potomac River um, between Arlington and DC. And right now, all of our passenger trains and VRE commuter service goes over that bridge, and we're not able to expand it any further until we do replace that bridge. It's at 98% capacity today. So as part of this, we'll be constructing that bridge and that um, uh, those additional infrastructure improvements to be able to free up new capacity for passenger rail service and commuter rail service um, throughout the Fredericksburg district. On the transit side, this is the third year in which we are prioritizing projects using our new merit process. This year, we received more applications than we've ever received in prior years. That's a total of 592 project applications for a total of $216 million, um, which was far, uh, far more than the amount that we had available. So as a result, per CTB policy, we'll be prioritizing state of good repair projects over any major expansion projects this year. So of the state of good repair projects that we are funding this year, it's primarily on funding assets that are at 95% or greater of their useful life. So we evaluated a total of 451 state of good repair projects and we'll be funding 374. We'll also be funding 62 what's called minor enhancement projects and an additional um, uh, 7.8 million in funding for electric buses, which we're receiving from the state's VW Mitigation Trust. And this is a partnership that DRPT has with the Department of Environmental Quality. We'll be funding 19 new electric vehicles uh, across three agencies, and that's at Valley Metro in Roanoke, Blacksburg Transit, and Fairfax County. So we're very excited about that uh, opportunity to expand electric buses across the state. On the operating side, this has been a, a year like no others for transit agencies, large and small across the Commonwealth, um, as they've maintained critical lifeline services, but also um, withstood significant ridership losses due to COVID-19. We are providing additional funding this year um, for operations, an additional 2% uh, statewide, which means that all of the agencies across the state will receive an increase in operating funding. In addition to that, we have special projects that are used to support commuter assistance programs, um, in the, including several in the uh, Fredericksburg district here. Uh, we are referring, ref, returning funding to near pre-pandemic levels, but focusing on programs that address the return to service uh, to transit. In addition to that, we have a marketing and research project um, also focusing on the return to transit, which will provide research that we can apply statewide uh, to agencies about how best to uh, bring ridership back. 
here in the Fredericksburg district, we're providing 11.8 million in funding for public transportation. And that includes federal, state, um, and local funding. Uh, for Fred, uh, we will be providing 752,000 in state operating assistance, plus funding uh, three uh, new buses and the Fredericksburg's uh, transit strategic plan. We'll also be providing operating grants to GW Ride Connect, Middle Peninsula Ride Share, and the Northern Neck Commuter Services. For the George Washington Regional Commission, we are funding an inter-regional mobility east-west mobility study. And for our human service transportation in the Fredericksburg District, we're providing funding to um, Healthy Generations, which is part of the Rappahannock AAA and Rappahannock Area CSB. On the rail planning side, uh, we're providing uh, nearly $11 million to a variety of different projects. That includes future service development planning in this corridor, um, a statewide rail plan, and an update of an east-west commonwealth corridor, and also uh, $3.9 million in station improvement planning uh, for identifying state of good repair and access improvement needs statewide, and um, finishing up station studies at Bedford, Charlottesville, and with DC to RBA preliminary engineering. So with that, again, I'm very pleased to be here tonight and I look forward to hearing your comments. Thanks. Yes, thank you. And for those of you viewing, you can see we're really trying to invest in a multimodal transportation system. Um, with that, I'm going to turn this over to the most enthusiastic CTB board member, Cedric Rucker. Thank you very much, Secretary Valentine. Thank you, Director Mitchell, and thank you, Commissioner Bridge. I must state that as a citizen of this region, it really pleases me to see the level of serious engagement to important multimodal uh, elements that will have a positive impact throughout the course of the Commonwealth, uh, specifically in the Fredericksburg region. And thank you for specifically highlighting those elements that will impact the citizens of this region. Just to begin this evening, I want to share a few numbers for perspective on the scope and scale of the transportation investment that is proposed for the people and travelers within the Fredericksburg District. The six-year improvement program that is before the board includes a total of $941 million in funding that is close to a billion investment in the Fredericksburg District over the next six years. Within that number, we have $182 million for state of good repair projects, strengthening the condition of our pavements and bridges to sustain the infrastructure we have. For new construction encompassing the Smart Scale program, we have $155 million for district grant projects and $103 million for high priority projects. There is $66 million in revenue sharing projects where we are matching funds 50-50 with localities to accomplish road improvements. We are, also we are also here this evening to hear comments on the new Spark Scale project for round four application opportunity. In the Fredericksburg district, we received 35 Smart Scale applications in round four, totaling 400 million in requests. Based on the data-driven scoring of those applications, 12 projects have been recommended for funding, representing 109 million in requests, 69 million in district grant program, and 39 million in high priority projects. I want to thank our local and regional government partners for their work during the fourth round of smart scale application processes. I appreciate the time and effort that has been invested to produce strong applications with data to support the need for these improvements. This is a significant funding increase for the district from the last two rounds. The district benefited from applications of 33 million in supplemental district grant funds that were applied to districts that have localities that are not part of regional transportation authorities. The projects that are recommended for funding address a variety of needs, ranging from safety enhancements to improving pedestrian travel to reduce congestion. To name several of these recommended 12 projects, intersection safety improvement on Route 3 and Route 605 in Lancaster County, improvements at Route 301 and Chase Street in the town of Bowling Green, including an innovative intersection, new commuter parking and pedestrian improvements, widening Route 2 and Route 17 to four lanes from Fredericksburg to south of the Shannon Airport in Spotsylvania. 
A 10 foot wide path connecting Idlewild Boulevard with the Virginia Central Railroad Trail in Fredericksburg. Several projects near exit 126 in Spotsylvania, including exit 126 interchange, imp interchange improvements, Rod 208 operational and multimodal improvements, Lafayette Boulevard multi multimodal improvements as well. It is important to note that the projects are still under review and that the staff recommended list is not final. Changes may be made before the CTP's final review at its May meeting and approval of the six year improvement program date at its June meeting. The board also takes into account comments from the public as well as conversations with localities. I look forward to listening this evening and reading some of the submitted comments. I also like to highlight projects that have been completed or underway. The I-95 exit 140 at Courthouse Road, Route 301 in King George. Under construction, all the work that we see on 95 in terms of those major projects that, in, that affect our ability to navigate our district. The road, the work that's taking place of Route 14 over Pumpertank Creek, improvement of Route 17 southbound over Dragon Run, replacement of Route 207 southbound over the Mattapani River, variable speed limits in terms of how we're looking at innovation and technologies that will be introduced to this region in 2021, the fall. I'm also very excited on the work that's taking place on the Chatham Bridge. I will be able to walk from my home to the other side so that I can access the Chatham Mansion, which excites me to no end that artery is important in connecting this district to the varied resources that are available here in Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania, Stafford, King George, Caroline, to the Northern Neck, Middle Peninsula. We are very excited about these enterprises. Again, I thank all of the members of this group represented who are here to listen to your comments because the work in, Fred in the Fredericksburg district is taking place. We're taking the matters that impact us very seriously. And I think we have an exciting future ahead with all the endeavors that you've heard about this evening and again beyond. Thank you for this opportunity to engage you. Thank you, Mr. Rucker. And for those of you who live in the Lynchburg district, I mean, Lynchburg, Fredericksburg district, I will just say to you that um, you are so lucky to have Cedric Rucker. His dedication and commitment to this position is unparalleled. So his passion for this um, is infectious. So anyway, thank you, Mr. Rucker. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Marcy Parker, district engineer, um, who does a phenomenal job managing all the projects that Mr. Rucker just mentioned. Um, if you could just imagine her, her job every day. And on top of that, I will just say, Marcy, that your constituent services have, have been outstanding. And um, I've been so impressed with some of your work letter, lately and letters and responses. And so anyway, I really want to thank you for that. Well, thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, I do not do it alone. I have a wonderful team of employees here in the Fredericksburg District. Uh, and we do serve 14 counties as well as the city of Fredericksburg. And we do maintain, uh, design, construct, operate around 12,000 lane miles of roadways in both the Middle Peninsula, the Northern Neck, and in the Fredericksburg region. Um, a few highlights from the 2022 to 2027 draft plan. Uh, I know that Mr. Rucker went over many of them, but there are nearly there is nearly $240 million allocated to projects through the Smart Scale program for the Fredericksburg District, and that does include the $109 million of new funding that's recommended for around four Smart Scale projects. There's also nearly $183 million allocated to bridges and paving projects through the State of Good Repair Program. And that includes another $5 million uh, in new funding to address some structurally deficient bridges and some deficient pavement. Mr. Rucker uh, covered a lot of the uh, recently completed projects, but I did want to put in the plug that even in a pandemic, we were able to complete all of those projects, many of them ahead of schedule and under budget. 
well, you will see that there is a lot of work going on in the Fredericksburg area if you have driven I-95 recently. We have about 16 miles of it continuously under construction, uh, and that is just a few, a few projects, three major projects. Uh, we have the I-95 southbound and northbound Rappahannock River crossing projects. Those are sister projects adding three additional lanes in each direction over the Rappahannock River, and that will increase the capacity between exit 133, which is Route 17, and exit 130, which is Route 3 in Fredericksburg. Uh, we also have the I-95 express lane. We call that the FredEx project, uh, and that is a 10-mile extension from the existing end of the express lanes around the Garrisonville Road exit, which is 143, and it will bring it down to exit 133 at Route 17. Uh, so there's a lot of construction going on out there on 95, uh, which means that we need to pay attention as we're driving on 95. Uh, we have that, Mr. Rucker named a lot of other projects that we have going on throughout the district, and with all that construction, uh, it is vital that all the drivers pay attention and you ditch the distractions. Work zones can change on a daily basis, and we want to make sure that both the drivers and the workers are safe. So please, please, please pay attention and slow down. Uh, we did have some very exciting news this past year. Uh, the United States Department of Veterans Affairs had announced that they will be opening an outpatient clinic in Spotsylvania County. And that was welcome news for many of the area residents who will be able to receive medical care a lot closer to home. So VDOT is coordinating with Spotsylvania County as it works with the developer of the clinic site in anticipation of additional traffic traveling to and from the medical campus in the exit 126 Massaponics area. We know this is a significant opportunity for the region and we are all working cooperatively to ensure roads are ready to meet the demand when the facility opens in 2024. One thing I know is near and dear to the secretary is litter. Uh, we recently did an extensive litter collection effort across the Fredericksburg District, which is traditional, before our first round of mowing. In the Fredericksburg area, we partnered with area elected officials, local government staff, and volunteers for an effort that we titled Beautified the Bird. And our crews and the volunteers gathered almost 600 bags of litter in just three days. We have numerous state roads that are available through adoption. Uh, through our adopt a highway program. So if you are interested, please contact your local residency office and they can match your group with an available road near you. As the commissioner mentioned, this week is National Work Zone Awareness Week. Tomorrow is Go Orange Day. I encourage everyone to wear orange in honor of all the dedicated highway workers, both state workers and contract employees that put the hard work in every day to make your commute easier. I thank you all for taking the time to join us this evening. Thank you, Marcy Parker. Uh, just amazing. I think for those of us um, with us this evening, just the amount of work that has taken place in such an uncertain time. And so I just really um, offer heartfelt thanks for the, the work and the effort and commitment to this um, across the board. And Marcy, when I read the article in the paper and, and saw the litter pickup, um, it just means so much because I think it's a responsibility of all of us and you know i believe it's important not just for how it appears but for safety reasons attracting animals um and economic development and opportunity and the amount of investment taking place it's really something that i hope we all do there is a new program that we've launched um called uh, virginia's for lovers not litter there is a website uh lovers not litter dot org literally two seconds to sign a pledge. And they say, if you sign a pledge, it just kind of changes um, how we all look at it. And um, so anyway, I encourage everyone to sign the pledge and really encourage everyone to, to really um, uh, love and respect uh, the Virginia that we have. So as we are making all these investments. Thank you, Marcy Parker. And with that, um, Justin, are you going to let us know about any public comments? I will do that, sure. We have um, at least three commenters on the line here, um, if we'd like to get started. Uh, Cindy Shelton, if you'd like to uh, address the meeting, um, please do so at this time and try to limit your comments to the three minute mark. Hello, you may need to star six.
getting we're getting you a little bit, but it's very quiet. Cindy, I think we're having some uh, technical difficulty with you. Uh, we're having a very difficult time uh, hearing you. You're having a hard time hearing me? That's much better. Oh, there you go. go. Oh, yay. Okay. You're, uh, I'm sorry. Tom Fox starts over again. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I, I wanted to thank you guys very much for all the work that you're doing in our region. Uh, it's really fun to sit back and look back at all the things that have been accomplished. The two things that I want to bring to your attention that I'm absolutely certain you know about then um, are things for the future. Uh, if you remember, Madam Secretary, you met with myself and uh, Chairman then Chairman Kelly uh, from FAMPO to talk about the I-95 improvements that we were looking for for Milestone 125 and Milestone 137. And um, just a refresher, is we were looking to alleviate some existing traffic choke points that we expect to get a lot worse once that bridge opens and to also fully leverage the state's investment in the FredEx and River Crossing that we all know and love and are grateful for getting. And finally, uh, it was a top pri priority to FAMPO then and still is for to bring that I-95 phase two project to fruition. And we hope that that conversation will still continue to take it forward to VTrans. I think the reason it just kind of got lost is because of COVID. Because this happened, you know, back in um, October or November and mm -hmm. things happened. So I, we just, as from FanPlus perspective, would like a follow up. And the second item I wanted to talk to you about is the infamous Brook Point Road or Brook Road. And you know about that because of significant drain on all the operational resources in the Fredericksburg region. And the question I have for you is will it improve the Commonwealth's responsiveness to this if we declare this road an emergency? There have been some residents and some others that have suggested that the Stafford County Board of Super Supervisors declare this as an emergency. And I'd just like to know if that's true because we'll get on that. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Shelton. It was great to hear your voice, even though I couldn't see you, um, but perhaps uh, yeah. we will. I am going to ask, um, one of the things about these public hearings is we're, um, we're supposed to kind of go through them uh, without much comment, but Marcy, perhaps we could follow up on those particular issues um, and about um, Brooks Road. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for calling in. All right, and moving along, um, Karen Barnhart, if you'd like to uh, address the board, um, please do so at this time and try to limit your comments to the three minute mark. I, I know that I have muted you earlier, so that's star six to unmute and address the board. Oh, we saw you for a moment um, at star six. There you go. Okay, here I am. Uh, I only had one comment, really. And that is when I looked at your draft plan, I had problems trying to follow it at times. And one of the reasons that I'm so confused, I think, with it is because I think it's page four five where you talk about um what's the difference uh the guide sheet okay and it tells the universal project code the program system and all of that but it doesn't tell how i take these dollar figures and make them into real money i don't know if it's thousands of dollars is that what it is Ms. Parker, can you respond to that quickly? By looking it's, it's, at that like, it's like uh, one of the bridges that we have here in Stafford County shows uh -huh. 85. Well, I don't think it's $85. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, we wish. But I'll tell you what, if, 
if you leave your contact, um, Justin, do you have Ms. Bornhart's contact information? I do. So we will have someone follow up with you. How about that? Yeah, I just think it would be nice to have that in the guide sheet that you put out, how to translate this into real money. Yes. Yes, that should be clear to you. Yes. Okay, well, thank as long you. as we have your number, I know that Marcy will have somebody follow up with you. But, Ms. Barnhart, thank you for calling us. Certainly, okay. thank you for listening. Thank you for being interested. All right, moving along, we have um, Sandra Pace. Um, I believe you, you mentioned you wanted the opportunity to speak. Um, but weren't sure about that. If, if you have public comment, uh, now's the time to do so. That's um, three minutes or so. If you could confirm that you're interested in making comment. That's star six to unmute as well. I believe she mentioned she mostly wanted to listen but might make comments so we'll we'll move along we've had a new caller join with a 540 area code ending in 21 if you'd like to uh, address the meeting uh, now's the time to do so um, please limit your comments to uh, three minutes you might need to star six I've had a few, uh, quite a few people um, on this particular meeting who called just to listen, so that, that may be the case here. Okay. Um, I, I believe that'll conclude the uh, public call queue. Okay. Is there a way to do the meeting where people don't have to star six? Um, anyway, we can talk about that offline. Sure. Yeah. But um, I believe that is all the public comment. Um, I do thank everyone for um, joining us this evening. Again, I wish so much we could do it in person. Um, I do really want to just send a special thank you to Marcy Parker and John Lawson um, for your work regarding the VA hospital and the work along um, Route 1 and your commitment to working with um, um, everyone uh, in your district. So I just thank you for your work and your effort and um, appreciate the progress that's being made. It's a very important project. So um, with that, unless anyone has anything else, I will adjourn the meeting, but I will again just thank all the people who make this possible. And um, I just really appreciate the um, excitement in working in transportation today. Thank you for being a part of it. Have a good night.